Good day everyone, my name is Priyanka and I'm a fifth year medical student at the University of Cape Town. Today my colleague and I are going to be talking about slipped upper femoral epiphysis in pediatric orthopedics. Just a brief overview, the Pediatric Orthopedic Unit at UCT is headed by Dr. Stuart Dixpeak and Dr. Andrea Horn. It has a vast drainage area, and the two main hospitals are the Red Cross War Memorial Children's Hospital and the Maitland Cottage Hospital. The Child Hip the child with a Trendelenburg limp implies hip pathology. The age of the child suggests the cause, i.e. the limp diagnostic calendar. Meet the team. From one to five years, a missed congenital dislocation of the hip, in other words, developmental dysplasia of the hip, is prevalent. Between five to ten years, Perth's disease is prevalent. And from ten to fifteen years, a slipped upper femoral epiphysis is prevalent. We are going to be focused on Sufi. In slipped upper femoral epiphysis, the proximal femoral epiphysis becomes displaced at the growth plate without significant trauma. In terms of epidemiology, SUFI usually occurs in adolescence. Boys are usually around 14 and girls are usually around the age of 12. More than 50% of both boys and girls are overweight, which is what puts strain on the proximal femur. In terms of etiology, the exact cause is unknown, but current theories postulate that there are five main causes, hormonal, retroversion, hereditary, trauma, and rare causes. Rat experiments have shown that sex hormones close the growth plate and growth hormone increases the thickness of the growth plate and therefore makes it weaker. To elaborate further, increased retroversion of the femoral neck in these patients predisposes the femoral head to slip posteriorly. Repetitive trauma in obese patients acting off an abnormal growth plate could be a factor. Hereditary makes up 5% and rare causes include primary hypothyroidism, pituitary tumors, hypogonadism and renal rickets. Children presenting with a Sufi usually present with a gait abnormality, usually a Trendelenburg or an antalgic gait. More than 50% are overweight. In terms of movement, there is decreased abduction and internal rotation of the hip. The timing has to do with symptom duration and hip pain is usually referred to the knee. There are five main types of slips, an acute slip, a chronic slip, an acute and chronic slip, a stable slip, and an unstable slip. In an unstable slip, 10% develop avascular necrosis. My colleague will now be taking you through to imaging. An AP radiograph of a slip, a positive to tone sign is exhibited. This shows the superior aspect of the femoral neck remaining superior to the head when a line is drawn through the image along the neck. Lateral radiographs of a slipped upper femoral epiphysis exhibits a positive capinous sign where the posterior part of the femoral head lies on the outside of the acetabulum instead of its normal position on the inside. There are two methods to determine the percentage of slip, the Wilson percentage method and the head shaft angle method. The Wilson percentage method is determined on lateral view. Mild slip is less than 30%. Moderate slip is between 30 and 50% and severe slip is greater than 50%. Before management, one must establish the severity of the problem. A mild slip is the most common category, presenting in more than 50% of cases and is considered to be less than 30 degrees of slip. A moderate slip is between 30 and 60 degrees and a severe slip is greater than 60 degrees. When managing, one must aim to prevent further slip and to avoid complications, which can be caused by manipulation or surgery of the femur. Therefore, pinning in situ is the preferred procedure. For mild to moderate slip, this is done by inserting a screw into the center of the epiphysis and 90 degrees to the growth plate. Severe slips can be unpinnable due to the increased degree of displacement. In this case, slow reduction of the hip in the abducted and internally rotated positions for a few days reduces the risks of complications. Persistent abnormal symptoms for one year after a severe slip are indications for an intertrochanteric osteotomy. Complications of management include avascular necrosis due to manipulation and femoral neck osteotomy. It is considered inevitable in an unstable severe slip. Chondrolysis, which is caused by a poorly positioned screw impinging on the joint space and can also occur as a result of the slip. Thank you for listening to our video on the slipped upper femoral epiphysis. We hope it was beneficial to your learning. For more information on the orthopedics department at the University of Cape Town, 
please visit us on this website. Created using Powtoon.